28. Sketch a qualitative graph of the pressure versus time for water vapor above a sample of pure water and a sugar solution as the liquids evaporate to half their original volume. Okay, so we just have to sketch, it, sketch a graph, right? So maybe I'll combine these on two. I guess we'll combine both of the answers on one graph, right? Now, they told us that it was a pressure versus graph, or sorry, <laughs> pressure versus time, right? And if they have this in this type of notation where it's something versus something else, the first uh, word that they always tell you is always the y-axis. So it's always y-axis versus the x-axis. So pressure is going to be on the y-axis, so P-R-E, under pressure. Okay. Gotta love queen. So this is the pressure. And then we have time. Um, a qualitative graph is just talking about the quality of something. Qualitative versus quantitative. Quantitative means that we actually have to include numbers here. But qualitative is just kind of like a general idea where you're just talking about quality and not quantity. So in this case, we can just draw lines. We don't have to include any numbers. So that's good for us. And now we just want to sketch a graph for the water vapor that's above a sample of pure water and then the water vapor that's above a sample of a sugar solution. So when we are dealing with, oh boy, when we are talking about this pressure, maybe I can just, by magic, make this look nicer. Um, when we are talking about the pressure, this is for specifically the water vapor. A vapor is in a gas form, and gases generally have pressures. So this pressure is for the H2O, that's a gas. And we just want to know what's going to happen to that water vapor pressure over time if we just had a sample of pure water. Well, if we just had a sample of pure water, there's nothing else in it. So there's no other interactions that's going on with the water and another, you know, another compound in a solution. So as time goes on and I just have pure water, pure water means only water. That pressure of H2O, nothing's happening, right? Because I don't have any other compound. So in this case, we could maybe just draw it as a straight line. And maybe I'll draw it a little straighter. That the pressure, wherever I started at, is going to remain exactly the same at the end. There is no change over time. This would be of the pure water. Now, wherever I drew this graph, I now have to take into consideration of talking about now we have the water vapor with a sugar solution. So for this one now, we have the H2O plus a specific type of sugar. They did not say whether it was uh, glucose or sucrose or fructose, but I'm just going to say that this is a sugar, right? So now you have um, combining components, whether you have a solvent and a solute, in a total solution. So now you're competing. You have multiple uh, substances forming a solution. So if I started my pressure up here for just a pure water, and now I'm including other things... That means that my pressure value in the beginning is probably going to drop. It's going to drop because I now have um, more uh, solutes that are going to be replaced for the other uh, component of the pressure, right? Component of the H2O. So in this case, I'm not going to start it at the same amount. I have to account for some of the, the sugar that's in my solution. So I'm going to start relatively lower. But now, what's going to happen? Is, over time, is the water going to stay the same? 
like in the pure H2O? Is it going to increase or is it going to decrease? What do you think? It's going to decrease. Did you get it right? The idea here is that over time between H2O and sugar, right, there are interactions that are going to happen between these. These are both polar molecules. Sugar is polar, H2O is polar. So there's going to be interactions between the two. And if there are interactions, that means that there's not going to be a lot of free H2O. The H2O is going to be now interacting with the sugar. So as time is going on, more interactions are being made. And that pressure that's above the sample is going to drop because it's going to be going into the sugar. And then it's going to drop some more. It's going to drop some more because interactions, interactions, interactions over time, it's going to decrease that H2O. So all you had to do was just start lower to account for um, the sugar that was there now in the solution. And you just had to decrease it uh, because now you have interacting interactions between the H2O and the sugar. So I'll say this is now the sugar solution. The H2O gas decreases over time. Decree... Am I spelling this right? D? No. Decreases over time. Talking and writing is very hard to do at the same time, but, you know, thousands of videos in, I have somewhat... I haven't mastered it, but I'm getting there. Um... So anyway, so I hope uh, this helps. It did say that the liquids evaporated to half its original volume. So generally, this should have been half down. But I mean, I, I got there, right? But just know that this one is not going to change. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you out in more, um, m yeah, more questions in the future. I'm just looking outside. It's snowing. Wow. It's snowing in March. But where I, where I am, it's pretty common. Um, so anyway, gotta love the snow. But I'm inside doing the videos for you guys. But it's nice to look outside. Um, keep studying hard. If you guys are in a library and if it's snowing, enjoy it. But always keep learning. Keep studying hard. And I will talk, talk to you in a little bit, okay? All right. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.